Hi, I'm Mark Locks, Extension Weed Scientist at the Ohio State University. We're going to be talking about Palmer amaranth a little bit here today. Um, we've been tracking Palmer amaranth infestations or the start of infestations around the state of Ohio for a couple of years. And up until this year, we had you know, a couple of places where we had infestations high enough to really be a problem. And, and then we knew we had a few other sites where we had a, a few plants. Um, this year, this is towards the end of August now. And this year, there were several soybean fields uh, that had to be mowed down in early to mid-August because the Palmer infestations were so high that if they didn't do that there was going to be so much seed produced that it was going to be just even that much worse for the next year. And these are already fields that were just really uh, polluted with giant, with the Palmer amaranth and we'll show you some of that here in a moment. Um, I'm in this field because one of the points that was made to us early on from our counterparts in the south about Palmer amaranth was that it can take over a field faster than any other weed that they'd ever dealt with and so you need to catch it early and their advice to us was tell people they just can't let any plants go to seed and one of the things that's happening um, in these fields that have to be mowed down is obviously there was some Palmer amaranth there the previous year but um, not at a level in some cases that the grower decided he really needed to figure out what it was and make changes and then he came back the next year of this year and put in soybeans without having a control program in place and had enough seed or plants to the past year really to, to cause a big problem and so we're showing you this field right now to show you that um, a field like this that has a number of large plants um, and as the camera pans across this you can see a little bit of palmer amaranth here and there is a field that um, will be next year's major problem these plants are capable of producing a couple hundred thousand to upwards of a million seeds um, and you know, when someone comes in here with a combine and drives through here and spreads all this seed through this field, um, it's going to just cause pretty an immense problem for next year um, to the point that um, not recognizing that that problem is there and going with a standard herbicide program, whatever that uh, would be, there's just going to be really be an immense problem. So basically, you know, the bottom line is we're trying to prevent any seed production at all. And if you have a field like this that you decide, okay, I don't really have that much. Um, and I'm just going to let it go. It's going to cause a problem that we're going to show you here in a minute that's just um, really going to be out of control. You're going to lose yield. You're going to lose money the next year. So I'm actually standing next to two fields that were one was mowed and one wasn't. I'm not really sure why this one wasn't mowed also, but you can see the level of the infestation here. And I don't really know how many plants were here um, last year, but obviously not to the extent that the grower really recognized he had a problem he needed to remediate. Um, you can see a big mess, potential for just lots and lots of seed production. Um, and again, the one that was, I think, similar to this or even worse that we're going to look at here in a minute was mowed down. Um, I think probably a little bit late to prevent seed production. And the purpose of mowing in this situation is to recognize that, you know, if I harvest through this and contaminate my combine and spread seed even more, it's even going to be worse for next year. I'm going to sacrifice the soybeans. Um, to, to stop seed production so it doesn't get any worse. And of course, that needs to be done before the production of mature seed. To make it worse in these, this field and the one that we just looked at, um, there was no use of residual herbicide here. And one of the things we talk about for Palmer amaranth is using residual herbicide as a first line of defense to take out the first flush so you don't end up with a population this high and you have more time to, to take plants out if you have some before they produce seed. So no residual herbicide. A big mess, potential for a lot more seed production. It's really almost too late at this point. It is too late to mow down this field. Um, and what you're looking for if you have to mow down a situation like this is um, to try to do it before the production of mature black seeds. And again, as we get later in the season, the shorter day length causes the plants to develop faster, go through the whole reproductive cycle faster so that seed heads develop sooner and they mature sooner on the plant. So that whole window shrinks um, and it gets more and more difficult to do that. This is one of the fields that was mowed down and you can see obviously Palmer amaranth in various stages here. We have them along the edge so you can see how big they were. And the goal here was to mow down the soybeans and the big plants before they produced a lot of seed. Um, you can see the mower, and this is pretty typical for bush hogging a field like this. The mower didn't necessarily completely destroy or take out all the plants you know, that, that are potentially producing seed. You have some like this and some that are even bigger bent over that are already producing mature seed. Um, so the mower didn't take care of those completely. And then you have a whole new crop of small ones that were probably there or about to come out at the time of the mowing. And then when the sunlight hit them, they all came up. So this field really needs another measure besides the mowing. And, and if you mow a field early enough, maybe this isn't the case. You could just mow and come back with gamoxin for the small ones. In this case, and a couple other fields that were mowed down in the state this year, you know, we made the recommendation that this isn't good enough to completely prevent seed, that the next step here is 
especially if you have plants that the mower didn't completely uh, destroy, come in with some type of pretty aggressive tillage that chops up um, the palmer amaranth and, and further prevents any seed production. And of course that tillage would take out all these small plants. The other option um, that could typically recommend it here is gramoxone, paraquat. Um, uh, that's what our counterparts in the south tell us is basically the best herbicide in a situation like this to kill all these small plants. So the recommendation here could be just gramoxone to kill all the small plants knowing that it won't shut down seed production on the ones that are already throwing seed heads or tillage to take them out and then kind of watch the field for a while and make sure you don't get another flush. So this is the first year that we have to mow down some soybean fields to keep Palmer Amaranth from getting any worse. And obviously you can see the infestation so high in these fields that there's going to be a permanent change in herbicide programs and a permanent increase in their herbicide cost to manage this seed bank of Palmer. Um, just to be aware, some of the things we've talked about where Palmer's coming from, this area here, there are several other fields that were infested also. And, and the thinking is the Palmer probably got started a couple different ways. There was feed, um, the cotton hull feed products that were used from the south. Um, and then manure was spread from an operation. And there's some thinking that those cotton holes were contaminated. And in fact, the grower did um, test those and know that, knew that there was Palmer in those um, after the fact, I suppose. But um, so that was one way. And then there's also a contract um, harvesting operation in this area that goes all the way down to Georgia and they work their way back up here. So um, there was some thinking that they probably got in some of their combines possibly um, because in that in parts of the south and came back up here and spread it on some of these fields. Another grower in south, southwest Ohio that had to mow down a field this year in that area the thinking was that um, it came in on a combine that was purchased in Ohio that had come from Georgia um, that hadn't been uh, sterilized. So. Um, that, you know, those are the mechanisms and the ways that it's coming in. So in addition to scouting your fields late season to really keep an eye out for Palmer Amaranth and knowing what's going on in your neighborhood to know if you have a potential to have it coming, you know, know, know where the equipment's coming from that's going to your field. If it's a custom harvester, if you're buying equipment, know where that equipment's coming from. You know, check with your local animal operators. I mean, if you're spreading any manure from them, taking any manure to make sure they're not using those cotton feed products or to check out what they're actually using there.